so often we read the word of God and we say, wow, how strong God is to have done all in which he has done in the past. But the strength of God is more than what he's done in the past. It's all about what he could do now in the present. As long as you trust in him, he can make a way where it seems to be no way. God says greater things shall be done in this time than was even done in Jesus' time. So stay tuned for this message entitled Strength in God. We are not like that. This has come from 2 Corinthians 10, verse 1 through 3. It says in verse 1, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. So we, why we have to speak about this is because Paul is saying, listen, through the Spirit, he could intercede, he could speak about your life, and what that interprets is he could get into your business. And there's so many churches out there and many saints who feel so uncomfortable when the pastor could prophesy about your life. But we have to learn as saints that it's not so much as the person who wants to prophesy and get into our business. But God wants to make all things known that you could grow and get better and stronger. What you learn as time goes on is that God has told you the same thing that the pastor is going to tell you. But you may not have been willing to listen. Maybe that voice of God was so quiet and so simple, you bypassed it, right? Even forgot it. And you continue to do the sins in which you want it to do. So he takes a stance here and he says, listen, I'm meek. I'm gentle in Christ, but at the same time, when I'm absent, the Spirit is still present, which makes me an individual that could see past the flesh into the Spirit. And two, it says, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Walking according to the flesh is walking to the lust, right? It doesn't matter if you're a man. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. It doesn't matter if you're a child. We all seem to have some sort of lust, and they all encompass the same thing, sin. And God winks at our ignorance and our sin for a time because oftentimes we don't know better. But when we do learn to know better about what's right and what's wrong, we're expected to walk according to his light, to according to his precepts. That's how we gain boldness in God. There's so many people, so many saints out there who don't want to be considered bold because they think they're going to be they're going to come off as arrogant and prideful. And if you are thinking that you're going to be that way, and what you're going to say is going to sound that way, then you need to stop yourself. That means that you're speaking out of the flesh and not the spirit. Whenever you're speaking with the spirit, it doesn't question, it doesn't doubt, it doesn't waver. God will show you things that there is no one else could see nor know. And that's where this message comes from because if you don't understand who you are, If you're always saying, well, I have to be base, I have to be meek, I can't speak up, I can't speak about their marriage, I can't tell them what I've seen, I can't tell them what God has shown me, then that's a problem. Because how could God use you when the very, the chief time he wants to use you, you're going to say, but I'm a human, I'm just like them, I've made mistakes, I've messed up in the past. That's why God wants you to be a vessel of honor that when he gives you that spirit it could contain the spirit and not be broken and disheveled by the spirit okay it says in three for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh there are so many times we hear this whether you're in a group with men or a group with ladies and we're all talking and they're all talking and we're saying oh man 
you know, I saw this man or I saw this woman and you started to lust after them or you're you're dreaming about them or you're envying about how, why can't my husband, my wife be like them, right? But that's walking and warring after the flesh. And I, I know what you guys may think, well, that has nothing to do with warring with the flesh. Well, it does because it starts with your mind. You're supposed to be the envy of the world. Could you imagine if through the storm you learned to love your spouse, you learned to love your children, you learned to love yourself? Then that's going to mess with the devil. That's going to mess with all those people who want to see you crumble and fall because they're going to say, wait, everything is pointing towards destruction for them. But instead of them crying and falling and, you know, leaning to their own understanding, they're actually delving in deeper into the word of God. And that's what we're going to learn more about in the next few slides. But in this slide, we have to consider that although other people sin, you don't have to. Although people make the same mistakes, you don't have to. You could be different. And don't wait for you to make mistakes. Don't wait for your spouses to make mistakes. Don't wait for your family and friends to make mistakes. You have to look at yourself and understand that I'm not like that. I could do better because God loves me. Our strength in God. This is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 through 6. It says in verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so when you think about weapons, you, you think about a sword, right? We think about maybe your muscles, your 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 fists and how you could fight. These are all weapons of warfare. You could think about guns. You could think about even words. Words could be weapons of warfare. There's wars that could start over a simple conversation, an argument that breaks out. So these things can happen. But what Paul clearly knows is that his strength is not in what he knows because you understand that Paul was one of a military background. But it's not about that background. It's all about the strength in which he's found in God. So then you may be asking yourself, well, what strength? The strength to cast down imaginations. Could you imagine most sin starts in the imagination, in your mind? And if it starts in your mind, then something that you consider as just a thought or just flirting or just, I don't know, a feeling or a flutter could turn into a lifestyle very quickly very easily but we have to learn how to cast down imaginations through the strength that God has given us so when you cast down imaginations you say well instead of me looking at this woman and saying well she's a better wife or spouse for me or even a husband or even children you got to say well you know I've been married for this amount of time and I've gone through all these things these trials and tribulations with my wife I have now. You know, I don't I barely even know that other individual. I don't know their strengths, I don't know their weaknesses. And then you could even go further and to say, well, I didn't get my wife or husband and children by myself. God gave them to me. So how could I disannual the very things that God has brought forth? Right? So that's how you cast down imaginations. Okay? When you're talking and people want to say, well, why don't you just have fun tonight? Have fun. I have a job in the morning. I have children. I have expectations. I'm a person. I'm a member in God. I'm saved. I'm redeemed. These are how you cast down imagination. So you may say, well, what kind of imagination, Sean? It seems like you're just talking about sin, about about lusting and fornication and adultery. So what is sin? Well, sin is anything that goes up against the knowledge of God. So if God says to love yourself and you're getting thoughts saying that you don't love yourself, you need to bring that down, right? 
depression could come in the form of a spirit. If we understand spirits, just like the man who is in the tombs and cutting himself and crying every night, he had many spirits. Many spirits could be interpreted as many feelings because spirits got to make you feel a certain way that is different than what you should be feeling. So now that you know that, then you could consider, wow, how many times is someone, things were going perfectly well in my household, but I just felt very different, very contrary to how I should feel. You ever feel depressed in a time where you should feel your happiest? And many people start to go to psychologists. Many people start to consider pills. Many people consider taking drugs. Many people consider to withdraw themselves from their family and friends of people who want to help them the greatest. But that's not the way we got to learn how to apply the strength in God. And in the strength of God, you got to learn how to pray. Pray these spirits out. Because what we learn even in the Bible, that God could send forth... And there are spirits that are created to even disappoint and cause you stress where there is none. Okay? There are lying spirits out there that we have to understand. So you could be looking at the mirror and calling yourself ugly when God says you're beautiful and everyone else believes it. All right? So you got to find the beauty. You got to find the strength in God. Don't believe in something that someone comes along and says just out of anger. You got to learn how to bypass that as knowing who you are in Christ. So in 6 it says, In having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You see, Paul is saying you can't judge anything until you're first obedient. Obedient in what? You may be obedient in word, reading the word of God. You may be obedient to your husband. But the point to the story is, you may be lacking in some areas. Obedience has to be a completeness. You can't be obedient on one thing and disobedient in the other and call yourself blessed. Well, you can call yourself blessed, but it's all about, and what we're going to learn about in the next slide, is about how we need to wait on God to call us blessed, not ourselves. Just because you're doing good doesn't mean anything. God says, and Jesus Christ specifically says, why do you call me good master? There is no one good except God. Okay? So find your strength in God and break down all your confidences, especially if it's outward appearance, outward beauty, outward strength. Okay? You need to find the strength in God to bring down imaginations, to be able to look at your husband, your wife, your family, and God and say, you know what? I really love you and I thank you for being in my life. What you think is true. This is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 7 through 8. And in verse 7 it says, Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. So many people could easily judge based off the outward appearance, what you think you saw, what you think is true. Just like when you have family members that you have grown up with, you think you know them. But when you come to Christ, Christ does a beautiful thing. God does a beautiful thing. He, he changes you, right? He changes you. He remolds you again. That's why he speaks time and time again. And we always mention it about going down to the potter's house. See how he breaks? See how he remolds. Trials and tribulations are not there to make everyone say, well, wow, you are that weak is to display your weaknesses, but God turns back and he says, through your weakness, you'll be made strong. You can never be made strong if you don't identify your weaknesses, okay? We will be lying to yourself. In the time that you ought to be a strong teacher, you got to be taught all over again. So then in eight, it says, uh, for Though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord have given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. So when you understand what is true, what you are doing that is right, it doesn't matter what everyone else is going to say. Okay. You got to know what Christ has called you to do. And although some people may boast in the authority, the title, the position they may have, 
not just spiritually, but also physically, whether you're a CEO, you're a manager, you're a COO, CEO, it doesn't matter what it is, but you have to learn that you're given this position in order to increase everyone's wisdom and knowledge about the goodness of God. That's why he puts you there. Don't think that you have to be this hardcore individual at work and never talk about the word of God because you don't want people to think that you are weak. There's strength in the word of God. What you think is true about everyone considering God as being someone that only weak people worship and serve is completely wrong. God could show you if you exalt him, then he will bring all men down to your footstool. And he knows that he could bring him down to your footstool because you serve him. So it's really down at his footstool. So what we have to learn is when we boast or when we talk about our position and what God has shown us and what God wants you to know about yourself or what's about to happen... We need to know who we are in Christ in order to do those things. Don't listen to everyone else all the time. If God has sent you to do something, do it with your head held up high and know that God has got your back. This word is not for destruction. When you speak, it's supposed to be life. But I know for some people, especially when you're being chased by the word of God, it may not sound like life at the moment. But if you listen very carefully and let it really resonate, it will start to bring the peaceful fruits which God has in store for you. Learn to use God for more than just getting stuff. He wants you to feel empowered. He wants you to understand that he is Christ and we are Christ, which means when you look at Christ, you could Look at yourself and say, well, I'm the same thing as him. And not feel like, oh my goodness, I just said the worst sin ever. You got to know, as Jesus Christ walked, he says, I want you to walk. As he said, it's not enough. You don't have to be greater than the master. But you could be like him. So consider that next time you're getting ready and someone's saying you think you're better. Christ was exalted. But in the eyes of men, they said they put him on the cross. But he was above everyone else. So think, not where you are now, but what you can become as long as you trust and you know who you are in Christ. Our limitations. This is coming from 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12 through 16. In verse 12, it says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. What is Paul saying? Paul is saying, For those people, especially when you're in leadership positions, you want to feel or make people feel as though you are the same thing. God says we are not the same thing, especially when he has called, chosen, and sent you, okay, you have to, when you are in a position of power and authority, you have to teach people that although we may look the same, by the word of God, I'm different, but you could be different too, you got to show people how they could be different as leaders in God, it says in 13, but we will not boast of things without our measure but according to the measure of the rule which god have distributed excuse me distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you our power is not to exalt ourselves over you or belittle you by any means but is to show you your weaknesses and to show you how you could overcome them and when you overcome them there should be a leader there to congratulate you of your progress in Christ. And even if there isn't, you have to know that God is smiling and knowing and seeing all things that you are doing. Okay. 
God has given us a certain measure wherewith, wherewith we could work in. We can't step outside that measure. We're going to read about that in 14. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you, also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Many times you're going to feel as though, well, I have to go into the club. I have to enjoy a drink in order to really get out there and save souls and bring them to God. That is not true. That is reaching outside of your measure, okay? Or that is going beyond your measure. God cannot protect you when you go beyond your measure because that's not where you should be. People should come to you. And how do I know that? Because the word of God says they should be drawn to the light. You are the light. The light is not put under a bushel, but it's put on the top of the mountain. So if people could clearly see your light, which means that you are living the life that God is expecting you to live, then people should naturally draw themselves to you. And when they draw themselves to you, that means you give them the word of God. So you're able to preach to them, not your message, but God's message. Because you understand that the word and the wisdom and the understanding didn't come because of your experience. It came because God gave it to you. And as long as you do that, you don't have to go and tell people about what you've gone through. Make it less about you and more about God. So that people can understand that although I may not have gone through the same thing that you have gone through, I understand through the power that God has given us that you could get through it as long as you utilize the power that's in the word of God. Okay? And 15, not boasting of things without our measure, that is of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the gospel in regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. So Paul clearly understands that he has to work just as hard as he tells another person to work. And he's not there to boast himself in what he has told another person to do. He's just doing his part in this world. And we have to ask ourselves, are we really doing what God has called us to do? Are you using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness? Or are you standing on the battlefield for your Lord? To preach the gospel wheresoever God wants you to preach. When it boils down to it, Paul is, you know, many people really believe Paul is someone who really boasts himself. But he's like, listen, that's totally not like me. That's not what I'm about. I have limitations just like the next person. I can't speak. And what that means is he can't speak things that God doesn't want him to speak. Why? Because he's bought with a price. He's not his own. I know many people think they can lean to their own understanding and do a lot of things. But there's certain you have limitations. There's certain things you cannot do. All right. I don't care how hard you try. You cannot do it. Unless there's a falling away first. If you're falling away first, that means God let goes of you because you're now enjoying sin and want to enjoy sin. So he will let go of you so you could enjoy and fulfill the act. As long as you are safeguarded and you can see the most prettiest of whoever, it doesn't matter. You still cannot do certain things because you have certain limitations. So understand who you are in God, that you could understand your limitations. Or better yet, just serve Him, do what's right. And you don't even have to think about limitations. But rather, you could understand that what you can do in the Word of God, rather than what you can't. Mystery. This is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 17 through 18. In verse 17, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. But not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. You know, so often, we really do work so hard to just prove to everyone that we're good people. And that's the problem. We are always are looking for people's acceptation or instead of God's 
We never want God to say, well, good job, because we think that he's absent. We believe that he will never say that. We believe that we could never amount to what God wants us to do because we're human, we're flesh. That's not true. We see it in the word of God about how he's commend from David all the way through to P Peter, Jesus Christ, and very self. But so you clearly could see it. And that's, those are not the only examples. I'm just bringing those examples because you should know those. But what we have to learn is we cannot glory in ourselves as though we've done something. That's how we remain based. That's how we go ahead and gain more of God. Could you imagine if you could prophesy, you could heal, you could... Um, Tell people what they're doing wrong. You could judge every situation. You could understand the word of God. You can understand the mysteries of God. And your base, I mean, when I say base, I mean you're humble. Like, you're just speaking just because this is what God gives me to speak. And when God is done speaking, I shut my mouth. And I'm not smiling. I'm not grinning. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I don't have my nose stuck up in the air. God will increase your wisdom. If you think that you are wise and you've reached the very peak, think again. Wait for God to commend you. And when God commends you, he doesn't commend you just once, but he could continue to commend you. And by commending you, he's telling you you're doing a great job. Keep your head up. Keep moving forward. Don't look back. Don't worry about those people. Don't worry about what they said. Don't worry about what they said they're going to do. I have you covered. I've got your back. Just as long as you keep forward, I will keep with you. As long as you never look back, then you cannot be crumbling. You will never falter and you will never fall by the wayside. That's what God wants you to know. But when you start commending yourself and why we start commending ourselves is because we start getting weak. We start looking, instead of looking for that appreciation from our wives and from the people who God has given unto us, we instead are looking for it from strangers. Why? Because we're weak. Because now we think that the people in our lives, they're not commending us as much as we feel they should. And so now we're looking for love elsewhere. And so why I say love is because now you're slipping into this emotion of fornication. You're looking into, well, if they could show me this much attention, why don't I just be with them instead of my own husband? But these are lies, okay? God has given you a blessing. And if someone does not want to commend you, you have to understand this is why God says, wait on the Lord to commend you. If you're living your life waiting for your husband, your wife, your spouse, or a family member, or your boss to rub your back to say good job, you're wasting your time. Okay? God is real. He'll rub your back even better than any man, woman, or child ever could. So, this is a mystery. Why it's a mystery is because so often we live our lives to the expectation of people. Okay, that's why we help people as much as we can. And I'm not saying it's bad. But all I'm saying is there's some inward things that are within us. Feelings that we need to cope with. That we need to deal with. Put it on the table of God, of the word of God. And deal with it through the power of God. If you don't do that, you can't come to the fullest. You're wasting your time. Because God says, just like he said to the Pharisees, you wash the outward portion of the cup, but the inward part is what's dirty, is what's filthy. The inward part is our bodies, what's inside us, our thoughts, our feelings. And as we already have mentioned about casting down those imaginations, if you don't do that, if you still could look at women as they walk and men as they exercise or have their shirt off and, you know, walk in the street, if, if, you, if that's your weakness, then call it what it is, but fix it through the word of God. Break yourself down, remold yourself again through the word of God. Through fasting, through prayer, you could do it. There's a power out there for you. God didn't go ahead and bring his only begotten son just to show you nothing about. He didn't just show you how he's going to die. He showed you how he lived, that you could have life and dwell in his life and have it more abundant. All right. So believe in the power in God. 
And don't get weary in well-doing. Stick in there. He's with you to the very end. God bless.